Hey, back here, Tom Lawrence with a, uh, another YouTube video. This one's for the Unify multi-site. So I showed you how to install it, showed you how to install it on Linux, kind of give you an overview of how the software works, which is pretty slick. Uh, and some people asked how to do your own multi-site. So this is a, for us, we have internal servers, uh, but you could do this in a cloud hosted server, AWS, Azure, or pick your favorite hosting company where you want to put this and spin up a Linux instance. So we install this headless and get it going like it did, we did in previous videos. And now we're gonna set it up for multi-site. Now there's a few things we need to do to get this to happen. First, we're gonna have to open some ports. So I made a list of the ports that need to be open. So the ports need to be open are 8080 pointed to the internal server. 8443 is the remote managed web interface. Now it's not important, you don't have to open this if it's internal, for example. So if you're running a server internal in your office, uh, you don't have to open it up externally. It, this is only if you uh, want to remotely manage it from outside of your office. Or of course, if it's in some type of cloud server, you're gonna have to open up the port so you can get to it. And 8080 is the announcement port, as they call it. That's what uh, does the control of the devices and where they connect to. And then the Unify is using the STUN protocol on 3040, 78 UDP and that's uh, used for data collection and information. Now it, you could set this up where it's a uh, set in form and I'll explain what these mean in a second when we get to the actual process for this but uh, it's unify.yourdomain.com it's really anything you want to make up so you could call it whatever you know my wi-fi stuff Dot your domain dot com. And that's just, you know, outside the scope of this, you just have to set up a DNS entry to point to whatever the IP address is uh, to that. And then you use the set and form command, which we're going to cover here in a few minutes. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete that. This is my internal lab and internal testing. And I uh, put some things in here. So we're just going to pretend there's a different URL, but obviously it's internal and private because uh, I didn't want to just expose all the ones we have for our customers. So it's set and form and then the internal IP uh, of my system that this is running on and ADD inform. Now you'll notice when you look through these that uh, purposely none of the Wi-Fi units are on the two dot uh, network. We have some on a one dot network and some on a three dot network and I've done the above firewall mapping to allow them to connect to the uh, other network here. Now please note these are only the network settings you need on your server. As long as the devices themselves have uh, unrestricted internet access, when you plug them in at any client, if it's a remote client somewhere, as long as they have proper uh, DCP addresses, or if you statically assign it with proper DNS to the Unify units, um, which most time we just let them set up DCP on the client's network, they will reach out to that remote URL as long as they can resolve it and get in as long as the firewall. So there's nothing you have to do on the client side to make these work. This is all internally uh, done. This is done on your server side. So let's go over how, how it works real quick. So I'm going to slide this out of the way now that we know the URLs to use. So right here we have the current site. We're looking at LTS Office. And then we also have one called uh, Tom's House. And you'll see that this one is on the dot one network. And then we have another one over here, LTS Office, and that one's on the .3 network, and we are connected to the .2 network over here. So they are completely separate networks, and the firewall mapping is allowing each of these to come through. Now, I have one more to adopt, and this is the tricky part for doing this setup. So first, let's go ahead and uh, start from the very beginning in, in terms of creating a new office. We're going to add a new office, and we'll call it Test Office. Submit. Now we've created a new office with no devices. So we just hit the pull down and all three of them are here. That's how easy it is to set up a new customer site. There's really not much to it. Once you set up that customer site, let's go and create a test Wi-Fi for it. So we go to the wireless networks and there's none configured. Now that pull down still works. So we can see the LTS office here and it shows our networks here. So as you switch between these, it's showing you each one. So each one of these is segmented off based on this pull down here. So we'll go back to the test office that we're setting up and we'll go ahead and create a test Wi-Fi for it. And uh, we'll just leave it open for now. Don't even need a password, but you can, it, all the same rules apply like I showed in the other video. It's it's all the standard Unify interface. So we have our test office test Wi-Fi and now we're gonna look at our devices. Currently there are no devices in the test office. And if we switch over to like the LTS office, we see our Unify unit here. Now we're gonna look at the adoption part of this. Now, when you do the adoptions, it's different and you have to take a same firmware Unify device. 
So it has to be at the same newest firmware and you can adopt it locally, update the firmware and then forget the AP if you have to, to get it updated to the latest firmware. It's an easy way to do it uh, before you can join it. Cause if their firmware is too many versions out of date, it may not connect. So definitely make sure you're on the latest firmware. If it's only a little bit out of date, you can update it from here. But if, when you're, if you're having connection issues, just adopt it locally, update the firmware, then do forget AP and it'll have the latest firmware and then this process will work. So just a quick troubleshooting tip there. We have the Wi-Fi plugged in and we have it plugged in at a dot one network. And uh, I am on the dot one network right now myself. So mine's dot 100. I looked at the DHCP table and I know where the Wi-Fi unit is. It's at uh, 102 right now. Now a default unadopted Unify AP unit is going to be username UBNT and password UBNT. So we're going to SSH into UBNT 192.168.1.102. Looked up, at, as I said, in the DHCP table to find out what IP address it was assigned to. It, you lack local discovery when these are remote. When, when, they are, when your cloud controller is remote or not on the same network, you're not going to get that local discovery like you're used to where you're just going to get pending adoption. So this is the process by which you adopt them. All right, now we're at the command line. Now, we had done this uh, set and form, and like I said, normally you'd want it to be your external URL as long as it's resolvable, and uh, you can test to see that things are resolvable here. So we can ping lawrencesystems.com, for example, and see that it resolves. And I actually got it renamed locally, but let's uh, ping google.com. And we can see that this device does have internet access and can connect. So now we're gonna go ahead and uh, set the inform URL. Now this is a multi-step process here. So first we set the inform URL here and now we refresh this and it says pending adoption. Now the pending adoption crosses all the sites because we had to decide which site we want to adopt to. Now we click adopt, but it's not going to adopt just yet. Just up arrow again and do it a second time and you notice it jumped over here. Now it can adopt and provision. That little step is a little bit confusing and it did confuse me at first and it automatically logs me out. So it's first you hit it once, it adds it to the panel and I don't know exactly how many, if you got one or two minutes of pending adoption, but this back and forth process is what allows the system to kind of confirm it, uh, that you're on, that you're connecting to the right network. You see it show up in there, you click the adopt, the second time saves it and then logs you out and reprovisions it and adds it to the network. And you can do this remotely. I mean, you do not have to be in the same, uh, as long as you have connectivity and it can be, you know, internet connectivity, it can be remoted. It will easily allow you to adopt the units like this. So you can actually go to a client, uh, plug them into their network and add in your domain information and it'll connect to your dashboard and then you can finish provisioning each of them. You can pre-program at your office, and this is what we do, to our dashboard and once you program to the dashboard it doesn't matter if their IP address changes they're looking at our full fully qualified domain and I highly recommend don't you can use IP addresses but if you do that and you change an IP address you have to run around and change those settings in all of your unified devices which is kind of a pain in the butt uh, so use the fully qualified domain that way if you ever doing changes internally uh, but that's it you goes there and wherever you put these, as long as they have internet access, you can pre-program that quickly, adopt them, build out a Wi-Fi settings for a client uh, with all the networks. And when they take them and plug them in their office, it connects to your server and you can manage them. Now, what if I would have adopted it to the wrong place? Well, they've got an easy solution for that. You go back over to manage Wi-Fi, you say, move this device, and I just move it to one of the other networks. So I can actually repurpose them and move them other. Do be careful doing this because obviously if they're at a customer's location and you move them somewhere else, that would be very confusing because they would see another person's network showing up within their network and all those config files would copy over. Um, but this does save you from installing a cloud controller on site. You can deploy and manage the Wi-Fi. Uh, and here's how the statistics look. So I've got it. I moved my house one off of my usual managed and onto this test unit that we have. So we're going to look at Tom's house here and we're going to look at the clients that are on there. Because of that UDP port being open, it's doing all the data logging and showing me how much data is being pulled by the Chromecast. Uh, I see again that Emily's home right now because it's showing her actively connected and it shows, uh, no, she's probably watching Netflix on this particular Chromecast right now. So it's gathering all the Wi-Fi data. Uh, we'll switch it over to my office here. 
as we put this on here for testing, I can see the different devices connected, what network they're connected to, and all the same thing is gathering up all the standard dashboards. So all the other uh, rules for this software apply. It all works the same and it'll even remotely control the USG devices and other devices that are controlled by this particular Unify interface. Um, so you can manage everything remotely. If we need to change something for any one client, make sure you're on the client site that you want. And uh, we'll go ahead and back to our test office. No clients found, nothing connected to it yet. Um, and we're gonna go to settings and these settings apply to this current site choice over here. And you can still set up all of your users and everything else. Your users are set up globally. So when you're setting up the users, they are added uh, globally to this. So that still applies. So all the rules are pretty much still the same. The only thing that's kind of different is the fact that you have this little multi-site right here. But once you get all your clients set up, whether you are hosting it yourself like we do and we host it inside of our office because we have a server rack, or you want to host this in a cloud server such as uh, AWS, Azure, or, or take your pick of your favorite company, um, this allows you to have one central repository for to manage all your clients. Now, if you do have to delete a site, because I've seen some questions on this, whatever site you created first you can export, but you can't delete whatever the first one is. So I created my home site first, then we created this one, and then we created this test one. You can delete those, but you can't delete the main one. So FYI, whatever the very first site you do is, that's the only one you're able to delete. But that's just a quick overview of how it works. It's really simple, uh, just SSH in and use that set and form uh, like the URL I showed you. Do add this in uh, set and form and do add the inform at the end. I've seen some work instructions say not that you didn't need it. Um, I found it failed unless I put it. So I'm going to say it's required, uh, but I'm just, if someone knows different, let me know. Uh, but it does seem to work perfectly fine by adding it and didn't have any problems. And as you've seen, we just adopted one in only a few seconds. Just remember that two part step where you do it click adopt, go back to your SSH session with that unit and just up arrow and enter again because the second time saves it and confirms it and away you go, you can adopt it and get it going. So if you have any questions, uh, leave comments below. If this video wasn't clear enough or whatever, let me know if I need to redo a couple things in there. But I think I pretty much got it just to kind of give you guys an idea. And this is why I love the Unify software because you can self-host. Uh, I'm not beholden to an external server or some dashboard controlled only by them that they could later change. Um, and you're controlling all of your clients from your internal server in our case because we host it. But it's, even if it's a server you host like an AWS, it's something you have control over, uh, not third party. So if something terrible happens to the Unify company and they go out of business, I'm not linked to their dashboard, how we manage it. I'm linked to the software. And the only worst case scenario of Unified Tank would be I wouldn't be able to get new updates, which would be tragic because uh, we really like their products. I don't think they're going anywhere. Um, and this is just the way this works in this latest version of the Unify software is super simple. Uh, it's made managing all of our clients' networks remotely really easy and uh, pretty much pain-free. We just, you know, go through the list of our clients and we can, if someone calls for a Wi-Fi change or wants us to look at something, we can see all the devices connected. We can reset the Wi-Fi. We can change a password uh, and gather all the statistics and we're controlling all the servers here. We do a lot of small businesses with small and pops so this is great they don't there's no cloud controller need to be put at their office uh, you just program the Wi-Fi units to reach out to our server via our fully qualified domain name and they all connect and if the client moves changes IP address doesn't affect us any you know it still connects as long as they have internet connectivity uh, the Wi-Fi units connect so uh, thanks again for watching if you like the content here like and subscribe appreciate it